On location. When Tell Sean Payton, keep talking that shit. We gonna see him soon. You feel me? How will you feel? This is our time! This day is our day! If I see you again. This moment is our moment! This is what we're doing! What a matchup in the early game on Sunday. Diana Rossini is in NOLA today with the Saints. So Diana, Sean Payton repeatedly told his team the goal was the Super Bowl. Now they're a win away. What's been the message to his team this week? And starve your distractions and feed your focus. He wants them to sound out everything going on in their life outside football right now and focus on this game on Sunday. And, you know, when you talk to the players about that inside the locker room, they all say it's actually quite easy to stay focused, especially knowing they are just one win away from getting to the Super Bowl. One player inside said that, uh, inside the locker room actually shared, you know, if Peyton wasn't a head coach, he would be the most masterful psychologist because he's got such a great way of getting inside our heads, yet they say they're not really needing a lot of motivation this week. But as for Sean Payton, at this point in his career, we know he's been here before, he's been coaching with the Saints for 13 years. Take a listen to what drives him now. It's like a drug a little bit. Um... Once you've been to this game, and I've told our, you know, the guys that there are many of them that haven't, but once you've been to it, it's hard to describe. So picture your 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 most exciting thing you can envision outside of uh, certain family things, and and then times it by a thousand. You know, it's the one thing talking to Bill this week, even Parcells, and he, he doesn't miss coaching, but he misses coaching in the postseason. I don't know how to describe it, but it's uh, you know intoxicating, I guess you'd say. Yeah, he certainly doesn't need any extra motivation. He's well aware of this moment. And the locker room is really loose right now. On Fridays here in New Orleans, they actually have oysters. They eat out there. I actually just saw the truck. I was outside, and not that I want to rub it into our colleagues' uh, faces out there in Kansas City, but it's like a warm 70, 71 degrees. So the mood here in New Orleans, it's calm, and it's focused as they're getting ready for Sunday. Yeah, I've had some of those oysters. They're pretty awesome. Diana, you've been around this team a lot. You know them well. How would you gauge their confidence? All right, so inside the locker room yesterday, I walked around and got a bunch of different players just asking them, all right, so who's the most locked in guy right now? And I don't think this is surprising, but most of the answers were the same two guys. And that's 40-year-old Drew Brees and third-year wideout Michael Thomas. And when I talked to some players about Michael Thomas, and I know you guys were referencing some of the great things he does on the field. I was asking his teammates, what is making him so incredible, though, at this point? How is he so locked in? And one of his teammates said, you know, we go through walkthrough. It's called walk through. You walk through it, right? He never walks. He runs through every single drill. He never turns it off. And I actually had a chance to talk to Michael Thomas over text, and I just wanted to get an idea of how he feels about headed into this game. And he said, you know what? Right now, I don't really want to talk about anything. I'm just going to go out there and perform, and then I'll talk to you later. <laughs> that sounds about right, Diana. <laughs> Thanks. The atmosphere there is going to be amazing. Enjoy the game. So that play calling, Sean Payton, it's so creative. Show us a little bit of that. Here's why, Susie, like defensive players like Darren and I don't like offenses. Here it is. They think they're smarter than you. <laughs> and here it is. Here's, a, here's a, just a, a case of how they think they're smarter than you right here. I want you to keep your eye on Ben Watson right here because this is going to be a simple little play action. I'll show you the play action in the backfield right there. Nothing's complex about that. But watch what Ben Watson does here. He's going to pretend like he's blocking, and then, of course, the defenders are going to get their eyes in the backfield, but it's not really that. And then watch him release. A little delay route, they get behind him, and it's, touch and it's a touchdown. This was week nine, all right? That was on the 12-yard line. I just want you to remember that because when we go further on down the season, now this is week 12, okay? And now, what did I say? That it was the 12-yard line, right? What's that? That's the same yard line right there, but it's not Ben Watson this time. It's Austin Carr. So, do you think we're going to get a little bit of a play action in the backfield? There's the play action in the backfield. There's the block by a different player. And then, here's the eyes by the defensive player. So, actually, in reality, 
The offense is smarter than the defense <laughs> on this one. Okay, they got you. Same play, same yard line. Three weeks later, you didn't do your film work. You thought it was going to be a Ben Watson, but it's a receiver. This is the creative play calling. It's borderline arrogance, okay? It's borderline arrogance to me as a play caller that you do the same play, dress it up a little bit, and you get the same result. Sean Payton, after this one, I bet you was saying up, up top and saying, I told you we'd get him again. And so, if I am the Rams, I know what, what the game plan is in terms of well, how they beat us before, but you have to anticipate how else do you think he could show us this? And that's the hard part. Right, and then there's those risky plays that always yeah. seem to pop up, like bigger the game, bigger the risk. We're probably going to see one of those. Face oh, Hill, the Swiss Army knife. Yeah. You're going to see a lot. Listen, I, I spent two years with Sean Payton and Bill Parcells, and Bill Parcells would have to stop Sean Payton from game planning us in practice. In practice, he wanted to game plan us. I mean, that's how he is so competitive, and I know he put on the nice hat this past week and made some nice statements about Marcus Peters on game day. He's going to put that, that hat back on and say, hey, it's time to go right back at Marcus Peters. That's just how he is competitive. Yeah. You know, if you had to say who's got the play calling edge, obviously we all know Sean McVay. I mean, he's so hot. Yeah. Half the teams in the league are trying to mimic their, their head coach as Sean McVay. Who would you give the edge to? Well, in this kind of a game, Sean Payton, because, number one, he's got the experience doing it. He's been in the Super Bowl. I was on the wrong end of that one. Uh, secondly... Uh, the, the, the issue of the two defensive coordinators comes into play. Now, Dennis Allen has the hat on him simply because he's got to do something different against Sean McVay. But experience counts in these games, in the postseason. So you go to Sean. Yeah, I, I would say Sean Payton as well, and I, because I think it's, it's home field advantage for one, and I think he has the more complete football team, and the guy that's the extension on the football field for him is Drew Brees, and he's one of the all-time best. He's done it before. He's a Super Bowl champ, and he's not going to be overwhelmed by the moment. After all of that creativity when you're preparing for Sean Payton, you mentioned Taysom Hill, and usually you have a player like that come in. You guys know, okay, that's the Wildcat quarterback. We got power. We got counter. We got rollout pass. <laughs> Taysom Hill was thrown a deep pass right. and then threw one himself. He's blocked as a tight end. There's just a, a whole different package. He runs the option. All of that. All of that. So, I mean, so I'm going, I'd give the edge also to Peyton because when you're talking about McVay and Goff, it's so girly based. It's so run based is what I'm trying to say. Anderson is there also, of course, but limit that. And then I think you can have your way with them. I'll say that, you know, with a little bit of and caution, Cooper but still. Cup isn't there. Yeah. That's the one piece that McVay is missing and Goff is missing. Cooper Cup, that's his guy. That's his Michael Thomas. And, and not having that is a huge mm, loss, is. especially in this building, which is either the first or second toughest place to play in the league. Yeah, it's tough. You have two of the toughest places this they weekend, are, which right. another right. ingredient that Super makes down. this so much fun. So as we continue here on NFL Live, Back to that other spot, back to Arrowhead. And apparently, eight straight AFC championships aren't enough to make the Patriots favorites this weekend. We're talking underdogs after the break. You know, everyone thinks we suck and, <laughs> you know, can't win any games, so we'll see. I mean, I don't think they suck. I can tell, I can tell you that. <laughs> All right, as we go back to the AFC championship game, the duo of Sony Michelle and James White, outstanding last week. But did the Pats really tip their hand by which running back is on the field? This season, including the playoffs, the Patriots offense drops back to pass 80% of the time with White on the field and Michelle off. When Michelle is on the field and White is not, they run the ball by design 75% of the time. The two have only been on the field together for three snaps in 2018. As we welcome you to the film room, brought to you by Verizon. So, Darren, last week, White and Michelle both had huge games against the Chargers, but obviously in very different yeah. ways. But what's the key to trying to stop that run game? Well, the key is Gronk. And you watch what we, we look at Gronk week in and week out, and we're accustomed to seeing Gronk catch balls out of the backfield, make, out of the field, on the field, spread them out wide, make those catches. But we don't recognize him as a blocker. And when we're seeing him as a, what he's doing, He's dominating the line of scrimmage with his blocking ability. He's on Derwin James here. He pushes Derwin James five yards down the field. Big play running in the running game. Here you have a corner that's, that's actually got him one-on-one. -on -one. Gronk gets to the second level, clears that out, and look at the room that, he, that Sonny Michelle has on the backside here. 
does a great job of getting there and understanding exactly what's expected of him. And then you get Gronk on the goal line, and you say, this is a smart block here. You, you know that there's no threat on the outside. He looks, there's no threat. He gets to the second level, takes on that second level blocker. So, and then, and then this, this, this is just a pushing here, just, just motivated to make big play after big play. But it's not the passing game. And, and that's, that says something about who Gronk is as a football player. He's not getting the ball in certain situations. He's not the number one threat, but he's still doing his job. That dirty work job there. there. That's yeah. right. And how do you take him out of the game in that way? If he's doing that much to make the run game effective, how do you eliminate him? Well, if, if the run game is going, you just keep that going. going. Basically, yeah. basically that's, that's who the New England Patriots are. They're, they're a power-running football team. In an age of offensive football where you want to be creative, innovate, and advance, they've gone circa 2004, and they want, they, they want that back back there. They want to lead behind James Devlin, and that's the way they want to do it. Play-action passing. You also get better pass protection off of okay. play-action yeah. pass because defend, defensive linemen are playing the run, then all of a sudden it's a pass. It's about a half a second late, so that they're playing to that. you got an older quarterback and 40, 41 years old. Give him a play-action game to protect him. you got to start with the premise that you have to put somebody on Gronk who can stand in against the run. So it has to be a linebacker or who can cover him on play action passes when he fakes a block Locked and goes down yeah. or arc releases to the outside. That guy is long retired. His name is Lawrence Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> There's nobody else who can do that. So you've got to essentially use two people on him. You have to have and when they're in a run formation, when Devlin's in the game, you have to say to yourself, we're going to play the run tendency and put someone over him who can power him and not get moved. When they're in an open formation and he's in the slot and you've got to put somebody on him that can handle him when, when, he, when he's releasing into the pass. Barry is the guy who can, comes closest to being able to do both. That's a positive matchup, I think, for the Chiefs as long as he's healthy. The bad matchup, if you put D. Ford over him, uh -oh, look out. Problem. That is a problem. That's a problem. You mentioned the old quarterback who's really good at getting the ball out quickly and obviously reading the defense, but you know, they go against the Chiefs defense, <clears throat> reads the NFL in sacks. Can they get pressure on They can in a, in a traditional sense, a third and long sense, yes. But here's a perfect situation for me if I'm the Kansas City Chiefs. Within that script, on those first couple drives, you're moving that ball up and down the field. You have the Patriots reeling a little bit. You get out to a 10 to 14-point lead, all right? Chris Jones, D. Ford. Say they stop the run a few times and get some three and outs, and then the New England Patriots start to realize maybe we're going to have to pass. But you have to get them out of that run and play action mode for you to get that pressure. And if the pressure isn't there, and if you can't hit Brady, Darren and I have talked about this, any type of disruption, pass, passing disruption, getting your hand on a ball, making Brady see through the forest, as he said it when he lost to the New York Giants in the Super Bowl. It's like throwing through a forest out there because, because they had Tuck and all those guys that knew they couldn't get there, but all they did was put their hands up every time right. he was trying Take to Take your throw the pride ball. out of the game yep. as a pass rusher sometimes against the Patriots. Oh, you, you want the sack. You, you, you want know? the sack. You want to get you them, but get your hands up. Sack him, and you can't rush him <laughs> off the edge. Take it from a guy that knows, okay? Yeah. <laughs> you can, we had Robert Mathis and, and Dwight Freeney, both Hall of Fame caliber players, send them off the edge. I don't care whether you put F-16s out there. It doesn't do any good. Watch Joey Bosa last week going up the field getting pushed by. Oh, gone. you yeah. got to get inside rush. Chris you Jones. have to have somebody who can do it. That's Chris Jones. Yeah. So these are some numbers that I, I just really can't get over. That Brady's been to the championship game almost 70%, 77% of the time in his career. And when you're talking about the Super Bowl, it's 50% oh. of the time. Eight times in 16 seasons. That's mm. it's unheard of. So is anybody buying the underdog? No, thing? not at all. I'm not. I, I know. You, I, I, I buy it because I know it's what they believe. It's what they believe because it's it's. Tom's still upset of being about the sixth quarterback taken in that in that I draft, know he is. and he, he just won't <laughs> let it go. It's and a it's, chip. He's tenacious. He has a chip on his And he will yeah, never I believe you. that you have faith in him because he's got his circle, and that's all he cares about. Everyone else outside of it. You don't think he can do it. And that, that, is, that is now trickling down to the entire team. Linebacker's too slow. Defensive line can't get to the passer. All of that stuff, they believe that's where they are right now. No talking them out of it.
And that's the way he treats every single day at practice, too. I mean, his teammates yeah. still talk about that, that he's still working every day meticulously on fundamentals and bringing in a coach to work on it with him. The it's day I uncanny. hear stories that he's changed, I need to give him a call. But I haven't got that story yet, you know, so that he's changed at all in terms of preparation and who he thinks he is and how he got to where you he know, is now. You know, the thing is, it's just the mental fortitude. The middle to, to do this for so many years, and these are long seasons. You're talking about getting to the NFC Championship, getting to the Super Bowl. Those are long seasons, seasons. and trying to bounce back. I remember in 92, 93, you know, su being Super Bowl champions and then coming back the following year and saying, man, this is too much. It's a I grind. Mean, mentally, yeah, it's a grind it for you, and for them to overcome that is saying something. The, the thing about this game uh, on Sunday is the Patriots won't approach it with emotion. They probably approach the preparation with emotion. With emotion. They won't approach the game with emotion. They're, they're prepared. They're going to go out there and do their job. The, the job for the Chiefs and for Andy Reid, and particularly for Patrick Mahomes, is to not approach it with emotion. Don't make this a street fight. Mm -hmm. Do what you do. Don't get caught mm -hmm. up in all the emotion. Let the crowd work on the Patriots. You do your job. Don't try to force the ball into Kelsey. Don't try to make a play. Because if you try to make a play against the Pats, They'll make you pay. You have to take what they give you. They're always going to give you something. It's going to be the run game. It might be the short passing mm. game. It might be the long passing game. You can't game. go broke taking a profit. You no. never go broke <laughs> taking a That's profit. That's the one, and man. Especially against the Pats. And if you, if you control the ball, who stays on the bench? Tom. Yeah. Right? So... <laughs> That's the way the Chiefs have to play. If they play emotionally, forget it. It's mm -hmm. over. Such different approaches, though. Yeah, Mahomes, and it's so flashy, and Brady, it's so methodical. It's really fun. Well, yeah. it, I mean, that's what makes it so great is, is the different so style. Yeah. All right, and yeah. hopefully we're going to hear from Tom Brady today, too. We've been waiting for him throughout the show, so hopefully we're going to hear live from Tom Brady. Also ahead, Flashback Friday. We're going to take you back through all of the tape-offs we've had this season. And Darren and Teddy are going to square off one more time. Make believers out of non-believers. Make believers out the overseers. Make them bow down when they need us. Film Room is brought to you by Verizon. The best unlimited is on Verizon. America's most awarded network.